Tom and Cecil over at Cognitive Dissonance invited me on their show last week. We had a blast hanging out, and you can hear most of that blast on episode 109 of their show, which you'll find linked in the show notes for this episode. But shameless self-promotion is only part of the reason I bring it up. See, when I first started this podcast, I kind of thought of all the other atheist podcasts as the competition. You know, I'd listen to Reasonable Doubts, and I'd say, damn it, these guys are way smarter than us. Or I'd listen to Atheist Experience and say, damn it, these guys are way more persuasive than us. Or I'd listen to Cognitive Dissonance, and then I'd get pissed any time they said something funnier about the thing we talked about than the thing that we said about it was. But then I heard something on Cognitive Dissonance that I could hardly find fault with. They said, hey, we just heard this podcast called The Scathing Atheist. It's really funny. You should really check it out. Now, that kind of changed my perspective on the whole thing. I came to realize that these guys aren't the competition. They're the community. I realized that I should be doing everything I could to help everyone else spread their message as well. It probably would occur to me sooner, but like a lot of atheists, I'd never been a part of a community that accepted me before. I had no idea what that would even feel like. In my neo-pagan, hippie, shrooms and peyote, quasi-religious days, I'd been welcomed into plenty of communities, and they were happy to have me as long as I was willing to play along with their bullshit. When my high school sweetheart decided that I couldn't bang her unless I got saved, I experienced a similar thing. But I've never been part of a community that would welcome me even if I said the shit that actually goes on inside my head. I can admit that I envy religious people for that. A religious family moves into a new town, and there's a community waiting to take them in. Gives their kids a chance to make new friends, mom and dad meet people their own age, and all they ask in return is 10% of their income and that they keep a straight face while everybody praises the Jesus ghost. Now this brings me around to a topic that's been big in the atheist blogosphere of late, so-called atheist churches. Here we have some much maligned attempts to bring exactly this to the atheist community. You've got Jerry DeWitt down in the atheist haven of Louisiana, you've got Doug Stanhope's Sunday Assembly on an international tour, and you've got dozens of smaller congregations hanging out their shingles all over the world. They're humanist chapels, or they're secular missions, or atheist churches, or whatever. And a lot of atheists hate them. Now, I see where they're coming from, of course. They argue that these things are a step towards turning atheism into a religion. They've seen this whole, yeah, but just sit down in the pews and let's just chat about morals thing before, and they don't like where it led. They fear that even the non-tenants of non-belief can be perverted if you wrap a church around them. Now, I know a lot of really smart people disagree with me on this, so I'll grant that there may be objections I'm not aware of, but from what I've seen, I think that the pros far outweigh the cons. What's more, I can see why a lot of atheists wouldn't recognize the pros at all. After all, seven months ago, I had no idea what it was like to be part of a community. But we're not talking about some vague, heartstring and platitude kind of benefits here. We're talking about scientifically proven advantages to belonging to a community. Benefits like not dying and not being a miserable old fuck while not dying. In fact, a lot of the research that Christians love to toss around that shows how religious people are happier and live longer can be entirely explained away when you separate out churchgoers and non-church attending believers. It turns out those benefits aren't coming from the pastor, they're coming from the pews. Secularists have made plenty of attempts to fill the void. We do our conventions and our skeptics in the pub outings and stuff like that, and nobody has an issue with it unless you replace the lectern with a pulpit, and then the radars start going off. I say we're making a big mistake if we voluntarily give religion a monopoly on getting together to talk about morality and forgiveness and community and family and love. I think we're buying into their bullshit sanctity if we say that atheists can't get together on Sunday mornings and sing songs and talk about ethics and get fired up about charity work and the beauty of the world. Some people reject these things because they instinctively refuse to believe that there's anything good about a church, but that belies the data. Others simply think it'll be too easy to abuse, but if the message is one of critical thought and a love for science and wonder, I think we owe it to the world to embrace these places wholeheartedly. Still others reject them under the pedantic argument that atheism is simply a lack of belief in God, goddammit. But I also think that there are plenty that reject the notion simply because they've never tasted a welcoming community before, and they don't know how awesome that really is.